All right, here we have the Longer Ray 5. It is a 400 by 400 diode laser. It's a five watt diode laser. And uh, you'll see it says checked here. Uh, well, this package was opened by customs. That's the first time that ever has happened to me. So I actually opened it ahead of time to take a quick visual to see if everything was there. Everything looks to be in tip top shape. So let's continue on. This is the quick start guide. I would suggest that you read this before you assemble the uh, printer, laser engraver, and um, also the flash drive that came with it. This is the X axis frame with the manual Z. Then we also have this rod is the synchronization, synchronous shaft. <laughs> so <laughs> for the X. We also have a power adapter. This is a 12 volt, five amp power adapter. This is the Y axis stepper motor. You might get one, but the axis is really light. I don't think you need two. And we also have the aluminum extrusions. Aluminum. And we also have three feet. Well, well, I have I am a tripod. I guess this is a tripod as well. Here we have the tools, parts, and the accessory bag. Seems to be a lot of stuff in here. It's pretty hefty. And then next we have some safety glasses. Yes, where are these? all the time when you're running the machine. I would suggest running it without it. Here is the five watt laser diode, and this is a true five watt laser diode. Next, we have the touch screen display with the wiring harness on it. This is, has built in Wi-Fi and it's a 32 bit board color dis display. And that's it, box is empty. What's nice is that these bags are labeled steps one through six. And the first step is that you're going to attach your stepper motor to the X axis along with the synchronization shaft. Synchronous shaft. Now we're going to use the T-slot frame fasteners and bolts to secure the frame together. Now we're going to just insert the bolts on the sides. As we go around, we will be tightening them as gradually to make sure the whole frame is squared. Once we have the frame squared, we're going to then put the X gantry on, and then we're going to tighten the inside where these grub screws are. Those will help ensure that the frame doesn't move or anything backs out. Never used these L brackets before. It's a pretty cool little idea, instead of just using T-nuts everywhere. We're going to use seven bolts with washers. These will be used to uh, secure the feet, legs, standoffs, whatever. But you only get three of them. I guess it's a tripod like me. You know, my two crutches and a leg, that's what I'm called, tripod. Uh, but actually, uh, the display is used as a supplemental foot stand standoff whatever so what we're going to do is just use two of these bolts with washers on each of the three standoffs yeah <laughs> uh, make sure you had right orientation got confused in that one for some reason but uh we can go ahead and torque these down completely they're not going anywhere the display is going to be in the left corner you see the longer logo, so it's the left. Had a little bit of a problem lining up the hole on this one, but at the end, I did get it to go through. Now we're gonna go ahead and grab a screw and a isolated cylinder, I guess is what they call it. Basically, it's a spacer for the screw so it doesn't go in all the way, leaves it out. This is basically gonna be your end stops. And uh, I guess it just doesn't have limit switches. Maybe they'll have an upgrade later to replace these with limit switches. 
Then you're going to grab a, another screw here for the left side of your display to make sure it's nice and secure. After the display is uh, mounted and the screw is nice and secure on the left hand side, we are now focused on the belts. This is step five. This bag has the belts, screws, and T-nuts. The screws and T-nuts are going to be used to help keep the belts nice and taut. Now fishing these uh, belts through can be a little tricky. You're going to go around the pulleys, the rollers, and then in through the extrusions. And since it's rubber, it doesn't really want to um, go through the extrusions uh, all that easily. But once you get one side done, um, the other side is a little bit easier. You find out a little bit of tricks, how to help move the belt along. And But the, the biggest problem I had was actually trying to get those T-nuts to turn. I actually went on to Longer's website and watched their build video for this part. And what they did was take an oversized Allen key and push the T-nut down and then turn it. And then I was, it was easier to uh, then put the screw in and make sure everything was nice and secure. Now, with once you're done doing this, you want to test out the gantry to make sure when you're, it moves nice and easily, it's not binding anywhere. Next, we'll be installing the laser diode. Um, and this is a pretty nice one. It's a five watt, a true five watt laser diode. And it also has that little protective shield on the bottom, but you still want to use your safety glasses. We're going to be using these two screws with these isolator um, isolation columns. Basically what those are going to do is to help uh, glide the dial laser as you manually have to move it up and down to adjust the height of it. So we're going to put those two screws on the back and then we'll put the two screws on the front and this will be finishing up the installation of the dial laser. Wiring is super easy. Basically, we're just gonna plug in two stepper motors, your X and then your Y. They're keyed, so they can only fit in one way. And then we'll go ahead and plug in the laser. That's it, that's it to the wiring. And then to finish up the installation, we are going to just use a couple tie wraps on the top. This uh, wire bundle loom if whatever you want to call it has a piece of plastic in it to help keep it above the gantry which is a nice touch looks like we are done finally done and done and i mean done with the build done let's talk about today's sponsor pcb way PCB Way is for all your PCB needs. They can do advanced PCBs as well as some cool things like CNC and 3D printing if you need. But they also like to know your feedback after you place an order. All you have to do is submit your feedback right here. You can win some great prizes. Also, you may want to make sure that you submit it on time. If you want more details, the link will be below in the description. I want to thank PCB Way for sponsoring this video. Let's continue on. Now it's time for our disclaimer. Yes, disclaimer. This video is for entertainment purposes only. You are following these instructions at your own risk. Always wear approved eye protection. People and animals not wearing protection should always stay away. I am not responsible if you do not become a pro after watching this video. Now with all that legal mumbo jumbo and Disclaimers out of the way, let's take a look at the SD card that comes equipped with the longer Ray 5. Uh, it has a lot of, lot of information on here, believe it or not. Uh, you do get a digital copy of how to set up the machine. So if you don't want to look at the paper copy, you have one right there. Also, you have a um, instructions for how to configure light burn or laser gerbil. I'm using light burn, I find it to be a lot easier. Free software is typically free for a reason. And Lightburn, as I just found to be a lot more user-friendly. As you scroll through, it'll tell you how to, you know, 
check your firmware and upgrading it. So I definitely would give this a quick run through because at the end here, it shows you all the engraving settings for power and speed. Definitely give this a once over. You'll be thankful that you did because usually I don't show you any of this stuff in my videos, but let's continue on. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the machine itself. First is some peely time. Now what sets this laser engraver apart from the rest is this actually has a interface. It's a touchscreen interface, which is nice to have because then you don't have to be tied down to a computer to operate it. Now this does only have some basic controls on it, but also it has Wi-Fi. Say that you are doing a repeated task, that's where I would find a great use for this. Um, during my testing, I still preferred the USB route uh, because I was doing different uh, projects and it just made more sense that way but for repeated tasks I could definitely see doing this it does have Wi-Fi capabilities but I'm not going to go ahead and show you the list of Wi-Fi sources to set the homing we're going to manually move the gantry to the lower left hand corner by both stops then we're going to turn on the printer wait for it to boot up then we're going to hit control and we're going to hit home and then we're going to hit yes now we're done you may have seen a waste board during the build process and that was actually for another machine as i was uh, testing this uh laser engraver i posted some of my uh projects that i was doing on the facebook group and a lot of people had interest of the waste board I said okay Let's go ahead and show you how I did it. Well, I went on to Etsy and found this one for another manufacturer. I'll leave the link in the description below. I imported the file into Lightburn. You'll see that it has three layers and each of them could be adjusted to a different power setting. All you do is uh, make sure you max out the grid. Pretty easy. And how did I determine what the power and engraving settings were? Well, let me show you. First, you're going to adjust the height properly for the laser using the cylinder. Then you're going to buy some MDF and make sure it's cut to the appropriate size. Take a scrap piece of MDF and do some test burns. I took a poll on Twitter and it seemed like the 800 speed by 80% power was the one to go with. Definitely make sure that you're wearing your safety glasses and in a well-ventilated area. This was done in two passes. As you can see, there's definitely some charring going on, but I think that we could fix that after this is done. Now you could have used some blue painter's tape to help alleviate some of this charring, but instead I'm choosing to use some 320 grit sandpaper. You could just gently go over it and you can already see some of it going away because we're just removing the charring on here. I'm just going over it and then using a brush and look how nice and clean it looks now. I think this waste board came out rather nice and it's great to have it for just orienting your part um, as also it seems like the accuracy is pretty darn good um, but yeah I suggest everyone should have a waste board of some type underneath their laser now they also provide some fasteners now I did my uh, waste board to the exact measurements I should have probably gone over I'm sure that these uh, fasteners go on the outside and not on the inside so it makes it a little bit difficult and the screws will have to go in on an angle. But you're going to do this to all four corners. And it's nice that they provide this hardware because other manufacturers don't. And then you just have to either come up with your own solution or just 
let it, the printer sit right on top of the waste board. And then you have to center it every time. Again, you're going to do this to all four corners. And preferably maybe on the outside, not on the inside. All right, let's start testing some other things. Right now we're going to engrave some glass. I'm using this uh, tempera paint with this nice soft foam brush. And all I did was paint the back of it. What's good about this tempera paint is it just washes off and it levels on its own pretty nicely. This cutting board was from the Dollar Tree. It's a, it was a dollar, but maybe right now it might be $1.25 and that's if you could find them. What I did was I reversed the image and we're doing it on the back because the front is textured. And plus, um, when you're doing something in glass, maybe you want to do it in the back, especially if you're going to need cut on top of it or something. So that way your image doesn't get scratched up. Now let's start testing some other products here. Ooh, look at that. We got aluminum business card. Pretty cool. Now we're going to test to see how deep it could go in grave. Um, this is going to be done with one pass, two pass, three passes. Yeah, we'll get to see it, how deep it will engrave with how many passes at 100% power. And look at there. Pretty, pretty cool. We got just like 0.38 millimeters at one pass, 0.7. Each pass almost doubles. And you can see how deep it is. Does a pretty darn good job. Really clean. Again, if you want to minimize charring, you can try putting some blue painter's tape, but definitely make sure you're in a well ventilated area. So I decided to do a sign. Now let's take a look on the other side. <laughs> this was the recommended settings. This is why you need to test. This got scorched, but look how nice and deep the engraving is. So I wrote it on the side here. What was this? Uh, 2000 speed at 100% power. Then I reduced it to 50% power at 2500 speed with two passes. And you can see how much nicer it came out. And the the depth of the engraving is it's about the same. So I think it came out rather nice. Now that was pine. This is bamboo. And again, it's a little bit uh, charring on the bottom. What I did was I, towards uh, the middle, I decided, okay, I didn't really want that much charring and I actually decreased the power. So again, you wanna do testing with some of your products, but I believe that came out still pretty darn nice. And um, you don't wanna burn your wiener. Now, I did do the recommended settings for cutting through, and it did this all at one pass. I could probably just uh, lowered the power, and it still probably would have gone through. But look how nice and crisp it is. And it's a little crispy underneath, but but it just it went through it with precision. Pretty impressed with how this thing could cut. Next, I decided to do um, my logo. This was at 2700 speed at 40% power. Um, again, you're going to see wood grain going through, but uh, it still looks pretty darn good. So what I did was I did two passes on this one. This looks very sharp. Um, all the tones look really good. Again, when you do wood, the grain is going to come through. So if you see the inconsistencies with the burn is because of the wood grain. Next, we have those uh, aluminum painted business cards. <laughs> Look at this. That came out nice. I mean, it, it can't get any more perfect than that with how it just basically burnt off the coating. Came out really, really nice. Next is the cutting board. Speed at 2,500 at 60% power. 
would you look how nice that came out? Now, you know, there's not black behind it, uh, so it might be a little bit hard to see on the camera, but it came out real nice. Again, if you're going to do glass, on, you know, engrave it on the back. Just make sure you mirror the image. Kind of like the saying, too. I made that myself, the image. Last but not least here, uh, some stainless steel. This is a putty knife that, from one of my 3D printers. It's like, get off my bed. That was like six passes. Uh, stainless steel is a little bit difficult because, you know, you got the shininess that you have to deal with. I think the duller the surface, the better it will work. You can also try to put some type of coating on it to help burn it a little bit better, but metals, stainless steel, you're gonna have more of a difficult time. But I know what you're thinking to yourself. What about food? Does it engrave food? Well, let's take a look. Now, this has been pretty costly. You know, wood prices are up, meat prices are up, but for you viewers, I spare no expense. Let's go ahead and see the steak. Oh, it says, eat me. How can I turn that down? I mean, I think we should just take a nice slice out of this thing. See if it's as tasty as it looks. I don't know about you, but I like my steaks a nice medium rare. Nice and juicy. And uh, how far did they engrave in one pass? Not too bad, but does it taste as good as it looks? Oh, absolutely. It tastes so good, I'm gonna go for another bite right now. Everyone should have a laser engraved steak. I think it's the new trend. But let's not stop there, shall we? That was a good steak. I did finish it. How is it with cheese puffs? I know that you've been wanting to laser engrave some cheese puffs. So I'm gonna do it for you. Oh, look at that. It's fluffy, but how does it taste? Caught yuck. No. Uh -uh. Mm -mm. I think that kind of answers that question. Now I also want to bring to your attention some safety that's built into this machine. It has what's called move protection. So if you jostle the machine or something, the machine will automatically shut down as thermal protection. So if it detects a fire, well, the machine will shut down as well. You have the emergency power stop, which is great to have. And you have that little shield on the bottom of the laser for eye protection. But I would always suggest you still wear your safety glasses. So where are my thoughts on the longer Ray 5? I think that it has some great features. You have the touchscreen interface, which I think is good for if you want to do um, some repeated tasks. Say that you're doing those business cards and you want to do, you know, 20 of them. Well, all you have to do is do it on the touchscreen interface and it frees up your computer for other tasks. The laser module is very powerful. It cuts through everything. I had no problems with the power. It says five watts. I believe it definitely is five watts. It's got a very sturdy frame. And also it comes with some mounting hardware for a waste board if you so choose to use it. I think other manufacturers should supply that as well. You know, nothing's perfect. Um, so there is definitely some things that I would like to see improved on this machine. Um, first, I like to see end stops. I, I think for the cost of the machine that it should have some end stops instead of some um, stops. Um, maybe that they'll offer maybe even a little upgrade kit for it. Um, documentation, even though it's very extensive, I think um, for the engraving and cutting, the numbers were just way off, at least for me. I mean, everything that I tested, I literally had to bump down for 
the power. Um, I mean, those two things I think are about it. Otherwise, I give this a great big thumbs up. I highly recommend this machine. Well, I thank you for tuning in to Tripod's Garage. Please have yourself a wonderful day, evening, or weekend, or whenever you decide to watch this video. Thanks again for tuning in, and we'll see you the next time on Tripod's Garage.